Hi readers, it's so good to see you all. Today, you're here for a read aloud. And I know you're super excited and you're thinking, oh, what's Mrs. Winger's gonna pick? Today we're reading a story called Brave as a Mountain Lion. And this is by an author named Anne Herbert Scott and illustrated by Glow Colson. Check that out, Brave as a Mountain Lion. And I picked this book because, um, I have been setting a lot of goals for myself in my life, and uh, sometimes I feel just like I'm doing maybe too much, or I'm not ready for all the things that I'm trying, but it's important for me to remind myself that I can just be brave and go for it, and this story always reminds me of that, and uh, so I wanted to share it with all of you. Um, so that's why we're reading this story today, Brave as a Mountain Lion. Another thing we're going to do before we get started, of course, make sure we have our tools, but I have those handy at all times, right? I got my pen, my sticky notes, uh, my reader's notebook, and the book. And another thing we're going to do is set a reading intention or a reading goal. So I'm going to look at the narrative reading progression and pick one or two skills that I want to focus on for my reading today. Hi, okay, here I am inside of a box, <laughs> inside of the narrative reading progression for third grade. Now, this is a fiction story, so I knew to start at the narrative reading progression. Um, I am gonna go down here, and honestly, the way I try to look for these is, uh, or try to choose them, is just kind of looking for things that I haven't done much of before, because I know it's important to practice skills. So, I think I'm definitely going to try orienting this time. So that's previewing a book's title, back cover, uh, cover and black, black, back blurb and chapter title so I can figure out the character setting and main storyline. Okay, so that's going to be one of my goals. Let's go. Hmm, I have some of those. I have some of those. Maybe I'll work on establishing point of view as well. Okay, so those two. That's a quick one though, so let me keep going down. I want to get down into some interpretive reading. Maybe I'll do some inferring today, developing theories about the kind of person a character is. Okay, so those are my three goals. I'm going to write them down in my reader's notebook. So since one of my goals is orienting, and I know that that has to happen before I even open the book, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. <laughs> so I'm going to take a look at the title, Brave as a Mountain Lion, the cover, the, there's no back blurb, but there is um, a painting here, looks like a mountain lion, I would assume, right? At first I thought it was a dog, but now that I see the picture and then I think about the title, Brave as a Mountain Lion, that must be the mountain lion. But then I'm also looking at the cover here and I see it's a kid. It looks like he's on a stage. And there's uh, lots of people in the audience. So I'm thinking the brave is this kid needs to be brave for some sort of event. I, maybe like a competition or a theater performance or um, I don't know. That's kind of my guess. Um, I can take a look here. Looks like it's a, in a place that snows. There's horses. It doesn't look like anything fancy, right? Maybe this happened like a long time ago. I don't. I see a wagon. I don't see any like new fancy cars. Um, and then the story starts. So there's no table of contents or back blurb. Um, but I do have a pretty good idea about what the story is going to be about. I think you know. Some kid has to do some thing and he's nervous, but he needs to be brave as a mountain lion. I'm going to write that down to get some proof that I'm working on this skill. Brave as a Mountain Lion by Anne Herbert Scott, illustrated by Glo Colson. It was snowing hard. Pressing his face against the cold glass of the living room, Spider could barely see his father's horses crowding against the fence. Soon, the reservation would be covered with darkness. 
spiders shivered. Any other night, he would have been hoping his father would reach home before the snow drifted too high to push through. But tonight was different. Tonight, he dreaded his father's coming. In his pocket, father could feel two pieces of paper from school. One he wanted to show his father, one he didn't. Not tonight, not ever. Beside him on the couch was his sister. Winona was playing with her doll. Lucky kid, thought Spider. Winona was too little to worry about anything, especially school. Hmm. So I'm thinking about the characters here, um, and I probably want to work on establishing point of view. Usually we do that right in the beginning of the story. So I noticed that um, the in the book it's not saying, I did this, I thought that. Um, so the main character is not telling the story. The story is not from the main character's point of view. A narrator is telling the story about our main character, and his name is Spider. So I'm going to write that down in my notebook to track my thinking. Just then, Spider saw the blinking red lights of the snowplow clearing the road beside their house. Right behind came his father's new blue pickup. Spider sighed. At least Dad was home safe. Now the trouble would begin. Winona ran to the back door, but Spider stayed on the couch, waiting. From the kitchen, he could smell dinner cooking, his favorite deer meat. But tonight, he didn't even feel like eating. Soon he heard the sound of his father and his brother Will stomping in the snow from their boots. Spider's father came in with an armful of mail from the post office. He hung up his hat and jacket on the pegs by the kitchen and stretched out in his favorite chair. Okay, two things going on in my mind. One, I want to write down the character names just so I can keep, them tra keep track of them. And two, I'm wondering why is Spider so scared? This is like something I'm really wanting to figure out. So I'm going to make two sticky notes, one for characters, one for the question. So what did you do in school today? He asked Spider. Not much, said Spider, feeling in his pocket. Did you bring home any papers? Spider nodded. How did his father always know? Let's take a look, said his father. Spider took the first paper from his pocket. Here's the good one, he said. Spelling 100%, every word correct. Good for you, son. But dad, I'm in trouble. Spider shoved the other paper into his father's hand. The teacher wants me to be in the big school spelling bee. Spider's father read out loud. Dear parent, I'm pleased to inform you that your son Spider has qualified for the school spelling bee, which will be held next Thursday night. We hope you and your family will attend. Hmm. So one of my, that sounds like a good thing, right? And one of my goals was to start inferring about characters and try to figure out the kind of people that the characters are. So Spider is who I'm going to do this work about. Um, and I'm noticing that he is kind of like a super nervous kid, right? Um, he gets to be in the spelling bee and he thinks it's a bad thing. So maybe he's um, not confident. Yeah, I think that's a good word for how he's acting. Spider's mother and grandmother came in from the kitchen with the platter of deer meat and bowls of beans and corn for dinner. That's a good report, little brother, his grandmother said, smiling. But I won't do it, said Spider. Why not, asked Will. I'm too afraid, said Spider. But you're a brave boy, said his father. Why are you afraid? Dad, said Spider. You have to stand up high on the stage in the gym and all the people look at you. I'm afraid my legs would freeze together and I wouldn't be able to walk. And if I did get up, there would be no sound come out and no sound would come out when I opened my mouth. It's too scary. Oh, I see, said his father. 
Spider's mother put her hand on his shoulder. You must be hungry. Let's eat. After dinner, Spider sat by the wood stove doing his homework. Dad, were you ever in a spelling bee? He asked. As a matter of fact, I was. Were you scared? I was very scared. I didn't even want to do it. But then my father told me to pretend I was a brave animal, the strongest, bravest animal I could think of. Then I wasn't scared anymore. Later, Spider sat up in bed thinking of the animals who weren't afraid of anything. Above his head hung the picture of a mountain lion his dad painted for him. How about a mountain lion, the king of beasts? Spider took his flashlight from under his pillow and shined, it, shined its beam on the face of the great wild creature. Brave as a mountain lion, he said to himself in a strong voice. Brave as a mountain lion, he repeated in his mind as he was falling asleep. I'll try to be brave as a mountain lion, he whispered to his father the next morning as he brushed his hair for school. Okay, I'm noticing a few things about the character and how maybe his character traits are changing. I want to add those to my list. So I've added he's curious because he's asking a lot of questions to his dad. He's seeking help, so he's the kind of person that would ask for help. And then he's also willing. He showed, he told his dad he's going to try it. Um, he's willing to try some new things. At recess the next day, Spider peeked into the gymnasium. The huge room was empty. He looked up at the mural painting of the Western Shoshone people of long ago. They were the brave hunters of deer and antelope and elk just as his father and his uncles were today. At the far end of the gym was the scoreboard with the school's emblem, the eagle. Every Saturday in the winter, Spider and his whole family came to cheer for Will and the basketball team. Those players weren't afraid of anything. Then Spider stared up at the stage. That's where the spellers would stand. He could feel his throat tighten and hear his heart thumping Bumpity, 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 bump. How could he ever get there, get up there in front of a room full of all the people? Spider ran outside, slamming the gym door behind him. I loved some of that writing in there. This author really was able to describe exactly how Spider was feeling, and it even made me feel a little nervous. I'm going to make a sticky note to remind myself, good mentor. That afternoon, it was still snowing. At home, Spider found his grandmother beating a hat band for his father's birthday. Spider watched her dip her needle into the bowls of red and black and white beads. Grandma, were you ever in a spelling bee? No, I never was, his grandmother answered. Are you thinking much about it? All the time, said Spider. What's the worst part? Being up on stage with all the people looking at you? Oh, that's easy, said his grandmother. You can be clever, clever as a coyote. The coyote always has a trick, some trick to help him out of trouble. When you're up there on the stage, you don't have to look at people. You can turn your back on them and pretend they aren't even there. In, that, in bed that night, Spider pulled the covers over his head. Brave as a mountain lion. Clever as a coyote, he kept repeating to himself as he fell asleep. Well, I am going to pause here. I've left a little cliffhanger for you. What is going to happen to Spider at the Spelling Bee? We will find out on the next video. Um, I'm still taking notes, but I feel like I've definitely done a good job with my orienting and establishing a point of view. So when I pick up this book to read next time, I'm going to pick up some new goals um, from the learning progression. Okay, I will see you later. Bye.